thank you so much uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak with you all today uh, um, and this uh, for the great uh, FAIR MSARF program. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be talking about um, a, a topic that's, that's very near and dear to my heart and why I chose this path and, and why I find it rewarding. Uh, uh, again, uh, as per the introduction, uh, I'm um, an assistant professor in both anesthesiology and population health sciences at Duke University, and particularly work in the fields of uh, anesthesiology, uh, as well as uh, as an intensivist in critical care medicine. And uh, my goal today is to talk uh, and, and work both in terms of as a physician and a, a scientist in this field. And my goal today is to talk um, a bit more about why this particular path was was right for me and why I helped to choose it uh, and why every day I get a lot of fulfillment and reward, and reward from this path. Um, before uh, jumping into into the, the rewards, I just want to help frame this in terms of understanding and it's, it's, it's been something that I'm building up more and more through my education and training and, and res uh, both clinical and research as to help me define why I go to work every day. And really for me, uh, what I try to center this on is really uh, ultimately to help improve patients' lives, as, as we're all trying to do here, um, and, and try to do this on both a, a local and a global scale uh, through, uh, through really expert and cutting-edge medical practice, um, rigorous research and education, and really helping to eventually guide evolutionary change in healthcare through this. And when I think about that reason that uh, helps me get up in the morning and go uh, and, and go into work every day, uh, I want to uh, frame that and and uh, have you all think of that as I discuss um, how I uh, make this happen in, in my mind. And, and I want to um, spend a few minutes uh, first talking to you about my career path, both um, as a physician. Uh, and a scientist, a physician in, in anesthesiology and critical care, uh, and as a scientist, uh, really in the fields of epidemiology and population health in the field, uh, as well as um, a, a perfect home for all of these interests for me, and that's been uh, to build a career in academic medicine. And uh, I'll spend the second half really talking about, uh, about the second half is uh, why I, I find this uh, personally and professionally very rewarding. So uh, first of all, I, I want to just talk a little bit about my career choice in, in, in anesthesiology and critical care medicine. And I know none of you would be here uh, uh, for, this, for the MSARF program um, if you weren't strongly interested in a, in, a, in a career in anesthesiology. And really for me, as I had gone through uh, medical school and was exposed to all the different fields, I had, uh, I had really a broad, broad interest base, both in the challenges and um, the uh, mental and uh, challenges of, of internal medicine in thinking through diagnoses and therapeutics for a wide range of, of human pathology, um, the acute care nature of emergency medicine and surgery, uh, as well as a deep uh, love for um, some of the basic sciences, including uh, physiology and um, as, as well as uh, pharmacology. And for all of these, in all of these areas, as I've been exposed to all the different fields, um, the perfect blend of being able to apply um, uh, really uh, strong uh, diagnostic and therapeutic skills for common diseases uh, from internal medicine, as well as the acute nature of the operating room and hands-on and procedural patient care and anesthesiology. It's made this an ideal career fit, uh, career fit for me, and I still enjoy going to the operating room uh, and, delivering, uh, and, delivering, and delivering anesthesia. And for me in particular, as I continue down this career trajectory uh, in anesthesiology, uh, I really, uh, and, and as I realized that um, I had some broader interests uh, even outside of the operating room, after consideration of many fields across, uh, across uh, anesthesia and many of the subspecialties, um, as I had really, really broad interests in all of them, I, I ultimately got attracted uh, to a field uh, and a, a subspecialty practice in critical care medicine, as it not only drew all of the complex uh, physiology and, um, and uh, and, and patient diagnoses and therapeutics that we that we do in the operating room every day, as well as uh, applying all the cutting edge uh, techniques for uh, organ support, um, as well as patient care. Um, the humanistic aspect of critical care, uh, specifically around working with patients and families around very very difficult and challenging problems, uh, sometimes dealing with. Um, 
a lot of end of life care and palliative care as well in terms of balancing patient priorities and goals uh, with their with, with with patient and families goals of care uh, I found very attractive as well as the strong multidisciplinary nature of critical care involving multi-professional group coming together working together and learning together uh, in terms of advancing uh, advancing patient care and it was really uh, during this area and during this uh, time when I was uh, uh, growing as a critical care physician, both, in uh, both uh, during my end of my residency training, as well as during my fellowship, that I really started seeing more and more gaps uh, in, in knowledge uh, across a variety of common questions, uh, both in the operating room and in the intensive care unit. And I saw how that this could impact not only patient care locally, but contributed to uh, patient care on a global scale, uh, both in terms of a variety of practice, uh, practice patterns, um, specific heterogeneity in treatments, and their impact on patient outcomes. And I became very, very interested in the scientific aspect of, 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 of medicine. Um, during my medical career, though, this is what I thought um, that uh, being a physician scientist looked like, and really spending um, a lot of time in a basic science lab trying to answer fundamental questions. And while this is tremendously important to healthcare science uh, worldwide, it didn't line up with, as, uh, with, with my interests as much at the bedside, as I felt like uh, some of this work was removed from um, daily decisions I made as a clinician. But I, uh, and uh, I was more interested uh, in, in that clinical aspect of, of of, of research. And um, it was during this time at the end of my fellowship and uh, early in my junior faculty career that I really was able to discover and embrace the fields of, of epidemiology and, and population health sciences. And I found that uh, I, was, uh, I had the ability to learn a scientific discipline that not only was able to um, build strong research and rigorous research methods for um, examining clinical care across a variety of different um, areas, both in the operating room and the intensive care unit and even nationally and globally, uh, but uh, learned a course a set of research methods um, that really uh, focused on uh, understanding different populations of patients uh, and, um, and understanding the best methods to study outcomes in these populations, as well as uh, work on implementing these ideas and, and, and on, on populations and outcomes into daily clinical practice. And, and really beginning to understand both the interplay of healthcare determinants in terms of on multiple levels, both at the level of the healthcare system down to genes, uh, as well as disparity, disparities across healthcare, the impact of policies and programs, and their overall impact on mortality and, and health-related quality of life to the patients that we take uh, we, that we take care of. And I began to realize that uh, this began to be an also an important uh, um, uh, priority in our field in anesthesia, anesthesiology and critical care medicine across a variety of different subject matter areas, uh, including an area that I'm very, very focused on is, uh, uh, in, uh, around injury care and specifically around traumatic brain injury, but, applic uh, but applicability to a wide variety of, uh, of areas in our field. And lastly, this has led me to uh, a, a home for both of these interests, both in terms of my clinical practice uh, in anesthesiology and critical care, as well as my research work uh, in epidemiology and population health sciences, to really a home in terms of uh, an, an academic institution. And this is my academic home, uh, Duke University, where uh, we, we not, only, uh, not only have the ability to have a robust clinical practice taking care of patients with very complex disease states, but also an environment uh, to support uh, asking questions and answering questions to fill um, these various gaps worldwide in the care of our patients. So with that, I want to spend the last few minutes uh, speaking a bit about how I took this, uh, to have taken this career path as a, um, both a physician and a scientist uh, in academic medicine and why this has brought uh, so much personal and professional reward for me. And, um, and like I said, there's so many areas and fields in medicine, even within anesthesiology and critical care um, for uh, a, a niche for different people. But this has ended up being a, a very nice uh, personal and professional niche for me. And they really focus around three big areas. One, um, this career path has really led me to becoming a better physician. Uh, it's helped me become excited to come to work every day for a variety of reasons. 
and it's built on a toolkit for an entire and fulfilling career, uh, no matter what direction uh, my career in anesthesiology and critical care takes me. So being a, a physician scientist um, and epidemiologist uh, in, in academic medicine has, has, has truly made me a, a, a better physician. Uh, one, uh, working in an academic environment has, has led me to uh, be around a group that, um, uh, that uh, collectively uh, applies cutting edge techniques to clinical practice and in terms of taking care of patients with very, very advanced and complex diseases. Uh, as a scientist, we're constantly evaluating patients and diseases and evaluating uh, and identifying knowledge gaps or, along both the, the disease and their treatment and overall impact. And that uh, fuels us uh, and me to take these questions back to our research team and begin to help design studies to help answer and, uh, um, and answer these important knowledge gaps. Um, it's allowed me to uh, apply research to patient care in a, in a very evidence-based uh, format, as well as understanding biases in current studies and how uh, those can and, and, and sometimes do and don't apply to um, the patients I take care of. And really, it's allowed me to bring all of these discoveries um, that, uh, that we make, both, uh, both at our institution and beyond, to uh, understand and apply and bring them to care of the patients at the bedside, which has been extremely fulfilling. My career path has also really led me to be excited to come to work every day. Um, again, uh, we've talked about both uh, uh, the medical practice itself, but also how the daily uh, uh, medical practice, uh, the discovery-guided medical practice, evidence-based guide medical, uh, guided medical practice can also help be the formation uh, to ask and answer a variety of pragmatic questions um, across our field, uh, across so many questions that come across um, uh, our minds every day uh, when, I'm, when I'm in the operating room or taking care of patients in the intensive care unit. And for me personally, uh, this has helped me advance an area of research that I've been very passionate about uh, in the care of patients with acute brain injuries and traumatic brain injuries, um, their, their development of multi-organ dysfunction and care practices and care heterogeneity around these patients and how we can optimize care practices to improve their outcomes. But this work has also led to uh, a much broader uh, research uh, set of research uh, in my work uh, in uh, uh, co-directing our uh, population health research unit in our department. And this has led to uh, interaction and synergy with a variety of researchers from different areas of anesthesiology and critical care uh, to, to conduct comparative effectiveness studies and, and conduct pragmatic health services research broadly in our field of perioperative and critical care medicine um, in, in an effort to make a global impact to our specialty. And really, uh, it asks me every day to consider the interplay between, uh, between patients and the larger healthcare system, think deeply about uh, logic and methods and research and ultimately use all of this to improve patients' lives. And again, as I said, it's led me to, um, uh, in another area of my, of my career that I wouldn't have thought of uh, initially, uh, even beyond my specific research niche, uh, into a broader area of perioperative and critical care population health. And lastly, um, my uh, specific career path as, as a physician scientist um, has really given me a toolkit that I feel that I can use for my, uh, for my entire career uh, moving forward. Uh, and this is really not only goes beyond um, practicing um, uh, evidence-based critical medicine, uh, uh, evidence-based perioperative and critical care medicine, but really the principles of both a clinical uh, training in our field as well as deep um, uh, research training in, in, in epidemiology uh, has really allowed me to take a more methodologic approach to problem solving, both in terms of research and non-research topics that we face both at, uh, when it comes to the bedside, uh, teaching, uh, as well as uh, research, as well as health systems and, 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 and leadership. And this has also um, given a, a toolkit that's, that's, that's allowed me to, to grow in terms of building and leading teams, uh, tackle a variety of problems, um, uh, uh, even outside of my specific research niche, including broad questions in health economics, implementation science, and healthcare operations, building uh, research subject matter expertise and giving toolkits to even advance in terms of leadership uh, in, in, in healthcare. So I hope this has given you a little bit of a flavor to the answer to the question of uh, why I go to work every day and, and to, hope, uh, to help you understand why uh, that, um, that why I go to work every day is really guided both by um, 
where what I've what I've done in terms of my training, but also the great degree of fulfillment that that I get from it. And of course, none of this professional work would, would be able to be done without my uh, amazing team um, of of colleagues uh, at, at my own academic home, and, and that's Duke University. So thank you so much for your time.